I know it's been a while since I've talked about the Maxima because it's been parked over here for about a year somewhere in that neighborhood well so long the tags have long expired take a look how long the tags have been out it's been out for a while I don't know why people do that I've seen that a lot <laughs> well um, just a quick summary for those who have been following me but uh, watching this video and don't know the history of this thing it's a 1996 Nissan Maxima my dad bought it brand new uh, from Hayes Nissan in Nashville which is now called Rivergate Nissan. When my parents got divorced back in 96, uh, they were he was driving this uh, Chevrolet Suburban. It was a 95 Chevrolet Suburban, I think. And shortly after my parents got divorced, uh, the, the divorce was finalized. And as soon as it was finalized, he got rid of the Suburban and bought this thing. And I'm, of course, I'm omitting a lot of details. But he bought this brand new, got one hell of a deal on it, and he had been driving it ever since, except for the time where he was married to his second wife, and she was driving it and while they were separated. When the divorce was final, he got the car back, and she got back that piece of shit Jeep Grand Cherokee that was a utter piece of jar garbage. God, I hated that thing. And I think the reason why, and the reason why it's a piece of junk is because it's been wrecked so many times, and they've just tried to fix it to keep it running. And then I moved here in 2013, a little before that, and... and uh, and about in May 2013, I bought it, and I've had it ever since. And I've been driving it a lot. It's got about 230,000 miles on it. I bought it when it had just slightly over 150. Uh, and when I bought it, it was a good driving car. But uh, as with everything, as it ages, it starts getting pretty bad. And uh, by the time that it needed something done to it, I didn't have any money to fix it. As I was working minimum wage at a, at a factory in the middle of nowhere... So, a lot of deferred maintenance, lots and lots of deferred maintenance. Uh, I've done a lot of work on this car, mostly all by myself, to various degrees of success, as I'll explain here in just a second. It, it had been in pretty bad shape. Uh, the valve cover gaskets were original to the engine, and they cracked and turned into really hard pieces, of, almost like plastic. So, I replaced them. And put new gaskets on it and then uh, EGR system was completely clogged had to clean that out that took a long time because that stuff was pretty disgusting when I got uh, all that put back together I did some other work to it bought a lot of brand new hoses put new spark plugs in it changed the oil and drove it around and for a while it seemed like it was doing pretty good and then it started puking oil again I mean massive amounts of oil uh, much worse than it was before, and I think, and I thought at first the reason why was because on the right half of the engine, I couldn't see to put the gasket on, so I just did the best that I could, and uh, I thought that maybe the gasket had flipped upside down while I put it on there. Well, no, that wasn't the problem. <laughs> There's a couple of bolts that uh, that go into the valve cover to mount the positive crankcase ventilation tube. And as I was putting them in, it punctured a hole in the valve cover. And so that's where the oil was coming out. Yeah, I don't know. That's another one of those really terrible designs. I don't know why they did that. Anyway, um, that problem has been fixed. And the, the reason why I stopped driving is because of the oil leak. It was just so severe. But I couldn't even really drive it because I couldn't keep it on the road. It was bouncing all over the place. Uh, bouncing all over the road. One of the problems was the uh, rear struts were shot. I mean, they were there was nothing left. So I replaced the rear struts, made it a lot better, but it still had a lot of shaking issues. And then I, I nailed it down to the two half shafts. The two CV axles were bad. I replaced the one on that side, and then I started working 80 hours a week. I couldn't really do anything with it, so I started driving the Buick and parked this thing. And then... Uh, but it was it was so bad still after replacing that axle um, that it was like man this thing is really bad you can't even drive it I think I was I had went from doing 90 95 miles an hour pretty decently to about 40 I couldn't drive any faster than 40 miles an hour in this thing because it was so hard to drive so I parked it and I bought some parts for it over the over the many next months. Uh, with the idea that I was going to replace it, then uh, and then it ended up here for a year, and nothing had ever been done to it. 
and uh, I put all the parts in the car, locked it up, and waited until he, the guy had some time to fix it. So uh, it's been fixed. It's got a new axle in it, two new inner tie rod ends because they will wore the hell out. It's got one new outer tie rod in, but I don't know. I might have to replace this one because this one might be original to the car and it might need to be repaired. Uh, I'll probably end up doing that eventually. But apparently it drives okay now. I still can't do anything with it. Uh, one, because I don't have it on my insurance. I had to take it off my insurance because I, what's the point of paying insurance on a car that you can't drive? And it's a good thing I did that because for a year I couldn't drive it. Uh, tags are expired. So tags expired, no insurance. Uh, and of course I can drive it and get the tags with no insurance. The problem is, is that it won't pass the emissions test here uh, because it has a OBD2 code. Uh, I think it's you know part of the fuel system where the uh, evaporative emissions part of the of the system has failed. Now, I was told today that it may be because of the valve cover it had holes in it and uh, it was losing vacuum, which is the reason why it ran like shit when I first started it up. It didn't run too bad, but it certainly it certainly wasn't up to snuff. So now that that problem's been fixed, it should be fine, or should it? So I need to get my OBD2 scan tool, bring it over here, <clears throat> and reset the codes. And then uh, I have been told that I can take it to have it in, tested for emissions, let it fail, and then go get a 30-day uh, uh, temporary tag for 11 bucks, which I might do just so I can so I can drive it. And but it needs the, it needs a bath, obviously. Uh, <laughs> God, it really needs a bath. You know, I had just cleaned the thing out not that long ago. And then, uh, well, not before I started driving, stopped driving it, I cleaned it out. And as you can see, uh, you know, working so many hours and so many jobs, I didn't really have time to clean it out. But this is the extent of how dirty it is. I did, the trunk is still spotless. It just has a lot of, a lot of garbage in it that needs to be cleaned out. I do need to get another front window. Because this one's busted, and I can't drive it with this shit in here. It, it sometimes it blinds you. <coughs> um, is it worth replacing all the windows that had all this shitty tint on it? I don't know. The problem is, is I don't know how much it's going to cost to replace the windows on this thing. But um, what I should have done when I had a job that paid something to start replacing the windows is all the windows need to be replaced. They're so pitted. And it's got this stupid freaking film on it. I hate I hate tinted windows, and this is the reason why. Uh, the one problem is the uh, the back window, which I know it looks really dirty, uh, but even without the dirt, it's still hard as hell to see out of because the uh, film has delaminated from the glass. I had started taking it off, but it's so difficult to do that with these defroster grids. And the antenna is on the back window too. It has a uh, horizontal and vertical antenna for the FM. So that is, that's the thing with this car is that it has a lot of issues I and mean, the body is in pretty good shape and the only spot of rust that I see is from it sitting forever here in this yard and it's developed this, uh, which probably started right before I put it up because I put it up in the winter of winter. We had really bad snow here and they salted the roads like crazy. So that can be fixed actually. That's not a, that's not hard to fix. All I had to do is just cut it out and replace it, weld it back in, and, and then paint it. Uh, it doesn't have to match. It just has to be fixed. So I don't really care what it looks like. I mean, it's got a lot of dings and dents, none of which I put in. Deer did this. Uh, this thing I love to attract animals. I've hit turkeys, deer. Animals love running into it for some reason. It sucks. But a deer ran. I hit a deer, and it went around and put its head right in here. And then my sister's hit it, uh, people have hit it, my dad's ex-wife has hit it many times or hit something else. Uh, my, and then somebody ran into me while I was in town. I had just taken my brake, my foot off the brake at a four-way stop and she ran right into the back of me. And this is why you see all this. Uh, Tennessee, I don't know what to say. I mean, it's, that speaks volumes right there. That is the Maxima update. Uh, I should be getting it on the road here pretty soon, hopefully.